I'm going to show you how to build an interactive map with XForms in a few dozen lines of code. Something that would normally take you ten th tens of thousands of lines in a language like JavaScript. In XForms you can put a URL in your data. If you output it, you see the text of the URL. But if you add the information that it is an image, then outputting it gives you the image instead. An OpenStreetMap URL consists of the site where the tiles are served, a zoom level and an X and Y coordinate. So let's store that information instead in the data and leave the URL blank. And instead, calculate the URL by concatenating the different bits of data. Since we now have the data, we can add input controls for them as well. And it looks like this. But one big difference is that the data is live. If I change one of these numbers without any more work from, from me, the URL, URL gets recalculated and the new tile displayed. If this doesn't send shivers down your spine with anticipation of the possibilities, you're in the wrong control career. Well, editing values like this is a bit annoying, so let's add some nudge buttons. This makes it easier to move around the map. But something happen, something funny happens with Zoom. And that's because at each level of Zoom there's a different number of tiles, so the coordinate system changes. So we're going to have to fix this. We're going to keep our position based on the innermost level of Zoom, calling that POS X and POS Y, and calculate from that which tile we want, X and Y, by div dividing by the scale. Now Zooming works fine. But what you'll notice is the word Amsterdam sort of jumps around the map as we click. This is because, for instance, if the position we're looking at is in the centre of a tile, as we zoom in, it moves to a corner. So we're going to have to fix this, and to, and to ensure that our location is always in the middle of the screen, we're going to make a 3 times 3 array of tiles with our location in the centre tile, and then make a porthole and using negative offsets, shift the tiles underneath so that our location is always in the middle. Well, luckily, that's a simple calculation. And here you can see it in action. Uh, I've put outlines on the tiles and made the bit that's meant to be hidden slightly visible. As I zoom in, you can see the array of tiles being shifted about to keep the location, in this case Amsterdam, in the centre. Now I'll zoom out again. And this is how it's meant to look, with the hidden bits truly hidden. But of course, what we really want is a draggle map. So we're going to turn the mouse into live data too. We're going to record its X and Y position and the state of the button, up or down. Whenever we get mouse events, we record the position and the state of the button in the data. Here it is. You can see the X and Y changing, and as I click, the state of the button changes. But now, we've got live data. So, we can do something with it. For instance, we can change the state of the mouse cursor from a pointing hand to a clenched hand. I hope you can see the pointer here. That that's a pointing hand, and as I point, click down, it turns into a fist. But the real thing we want to do is move the map with the mouse. What we're going to do is record the start point of a move and the end point, and from those two, calculate how far we've moved. When the mouse button goes down, we record the position as the start of the move. And the rest we can do with the live data. While the mouse is down, we record the current position as the current end point, and the move distance is just the difference between the end and the start. Easy. Here it is in action. Each time I click on a a click, a new move starts. And now we can apply it to the map. As we move the map, the new position will be calculated from the last position we were at. So we add that position to our data and then keep POS X and POS Y updated with the mouse movement. The mouse movement is in pixels, so we have to multiply it by an amount representing the scale we are at. And of course, at the end of a move, we have to reset last x and last y. So here's the moment of truth. This is all being done automatically by keeping a number of calculations up to date in spreadsheet style. 
I've had to do very little work to achieve this. Of course, once you have this framework, it becomes easy, trivial even, to add things like other map styles. Like this. Here's the standard map. Here's the cycle map. Here's a transport map. An impressionistic map. And the satellite data. And of course, the dragging just works automatically. So there you have it. 150 lines of X-forms. Easy.